And the clear teaching of Jesus is, no, grace is not a joint venture. It's not your hand and God's hand. And you go, let's do this, pal. Grace is given to one type of person. The one who has given up all claims and all thoughts of earning their way to God in a remote partnership. You're not just spiritually poor. You're not just spiritually bankrupt. You have a vast debt of sin you could never, ever pay. So spiritually speaking, you don't have $34 to offer God. You have a debt, an immeasurable debt. And Jesus has to come and redeem you out of that slavery. He makes dead hearts alive. He doesn't take sleeping hearts and give them a cup of coffee. And the religious people have missed this in Jesus' context. In heaven, there will be people who speak different languages, who lived at different times, in different contexts, different skin color. There will be a panoply of differences in glory. But everyone in heaven, listen here, everyone in heaven has something in common. No one thinks they deserve to be there. There is not a single person you will meet in glory who went, yeah, this sounds about right. In heaven, there will be varying personalities, introverts, extroverts, but there will be a common demeanor. Everyone in heaven will have what demeanor? Look with me at verse 14. I tell you, this man went to his house justified rather than the other. Justified means right standing with God. For everyone who exalts himself will be humbled, but he who humbles himself will be exalted. What's the demeanor in heaven? One word, humility, humbled. Can I ask you a question? Have you ever been humbled over your sin? I'm not asking if you can theologically affirm the Romans road. I'm asking if you ever got to the point of Romans 3, 19 and 20 that says every mouth must be what? Stopped, still, shut before a holy God. There's no one that waltzes up to the judge of the earth and says, hey God, no, it is a mouth shutting entity. People are broken over their sin. Humility is a prerequisite to repentance. You might have grown up in the church You might not have gone down the road of big sins. Every person who knows Jesus Christ has been humbled. They've been broken over their sin. They don't compare their sin to other sin. James 2.10, whoever keeps the whole law and stumbles at one point is guilty of all. They don't compare themselves to the adulterers because they know that every lustful glance, every gossiping conversation is an offense to a holy God. And they've been humbled by this. We just saying, how marvelous, how wonderful is my Savior's love for me. You will never, ever, ever mean what you sing unless you've been humbled over your sin. Amazing love, how can it be that thou, my God, shouldst die for me? That is only sung in truth and honesty by people who have gone, I am the sinner. Sometimes I look around and you go, why do so many kids leave the church at 18? I think part of it is because they look at the adults around them singing songs like this. I'm so thankful for the way that even we worship this morning. It's because when they sing How Marvelous, they want to know someone means that. Mommies, daddies, do you mean that? How marvelous. That is grounded upon you understanding your sin in light of a holy God. Jesus came to save those who are sick and recognize their sickness, not just people that nod their head at their mild spiritual infirmity, 